Hi, welcome to this day's fireside chat. Uh, it's good to have you in my kitchen uh, with the curtains closed, even though it's an overcast day. It's still uh, uh, too much light apparently and washes me out. Uh, it's good to be with you all, even though it's electronically. Uh, um, Judy Zurubic is on the other end of this recording, making sure that uh, everything comes up as we have scripted it. And so uh, uh, just a little bit of humor. There are many of us when this lockdown first began who wondered how long it would last. So we waited and waited and we're still waiting to protect others by keeping physically distant. Here's a suggestion for warning others away from your front door. For those of us enjoying home cooking, here's another suggestion. I could use that one for myself. I know that many of you are tuning in on Sundays for our worship services that are live streamed. And I'm thinking particularly of Dr. Gary Gerben, the tech crew and others like uh, Kate uh, Crawford Thompson who enjoys sitting in the balcony and I wonder if this gives the same feeling. Of course, with the currently much reduced industrial activity and significantly reduced travel, now this may be possible. And for all the kids longing to get back to school, they might feel the years of waiting wearing on them in remarkable ways. Oh, sorry. Uh, that, this is where we think we've got far too much time on our hands. And this slide, I, I misread my own script, is for those who, who the kids think that they've been waiting for years and years and years to get back to school. There are some students that I bet are feeling the opposite of getting too old. Instead, they might be feeling like they've lost out on some of their exciting experiences. I've been thinking particularly of those in our congregation who are graduating from high school at the end of this school year. That feeling of, of excitement, of achievement, of anticipation, and of dread at the next step now seem to have nowhere to anchor. Prom dresses and formal suits were selected and now languish in the closet. Limousine bookings are no longer even on the horizon. They must feel at loose ends and worried about the uncertainty of the landscape as they enter post-secondary education or what was to be their first permanent full-time employment position. I also think about the tragedies of folks in long-term care facilities and in retirement homes only able to see their family members at best through the closed window of their ground level rooms, if they're lucky enough to be on the ground level. They must live with the fear of uncertainty and the worries of vulnerability to this virus. I also think about the fear that the crew of the CH-148 Cyclone helicopter felt as they plummeted toward the Mediterranean Sea resulting in the confirmed death of Sub-Lieutenant Abigail Crabro and five other crew members miss missing in the crash. The sorrow, the loss, and the feeling of the world being turned upside down must be punishing for the families and for their fellow soldiers. It makes me think about how many of us are afraid, much like the apostles after Jesus' resurrection still huddled in the upper room, afraid to emerge from the safety of that room in abject fear of arrest and of probable execution. For us in these pandemic times, we are afraid of what the uncertain future might hold. Let me share a quote from Eleanor Roosevelt.
you see, when we face our fear, that is when we discover God, who's been there all along. God is the source of the love which sustains us even in our fear. In fact, as the Apostle Peter writes in his first letter, pure gold put in the fire comes out of it proved pure. The forge of fear, when faced, forces us to perceive God's love as the ground of our very being, without which we would have no roots and no soil to nourish us. Along with our fear, so many other emotions flood our hearts. You notice all of the ones that are there. How many of these emotions have you felt over the past number of weeks? Or for, in fact, even in the last couple minutes? You see, there is nothing wrong with any of those feelings. And there's nothing wrong if you don't feel any of these emotions. Whatever you feel, those feelings just are. And we do the best to embrace and to live with them. That's when we search for a secure place of healing. I would suggest that our family of faith is indeed the source of divine healing among and within us all. After all, love is what binds us together as one. It is that depth and breadth of love which becomes a beacon of hope. Now, notice this oil painting that was put up on the United Church of Canada website is a painting that is full of light. In fact, it is a painting of light. But notice that the light is not just one color. Instead, it is multifaceted. The diversity of colors may be separate, but they combine, interconnecting in such a way that we perceive the totality as a singular whole. It is love which connects us. It is love which sustains us. It is love that strengthens us. It is love which paints the hues of light of which we are a part in the whole. So if you, your kids or your grandkids survived on snacks yesterday, we are still safe. We are still loved. So if you, your cousins, or your nieces had too much screen time, we are still safe. We are still loved. If you, your friends, or your neighbors have no routine at the moment and sleep patterns seem permanently disrupted, you are still safe. You are still loved. So if you, your aunts, your uncles have houses that are muddled and have dust bunnies roaming freely, yeah, you got it. You are still safe. You are still loved. If you're tired or snappy or overwhelmed or numb, you are still safe. You are still loved. You aren't failing at anything. Instead, you are surviving. Well, everything. Regardless of all the disruption, the isolation, the upsetting of routines, the numbness you may feel, consider this. At this very moment, there are others, many in your own family, friends you just spoke with from a distance went out for a walk, neighbors you wave at or strangers in the grocery store or pharmacy. These others are trying their best not to fall apart. So whatever you do today or tomorrow or in the next days, do it with kindness in your heart. As we ponder what is yet to unfold, let us embrace Easter. Easter is the experience of the rhythm of life that flows from life to death to new life. In this season of Easter, we face the horrible death of Good Friday. We are living in that in-between time of Holy Saturday. We are longing for the new life, the transformation of Easter, 
to the surprise of what may yet become. So when you think about this particular slide, maybe, just maybe, we don't want to go back to what was. Now is the time to ponder how we might transform our world and ourselves for what we may become. For our prayer time, I would like to offer a video of Heather Rankin and Kim Dunn performing the song Safe Home Sweet Light, originally composed by Laura Smith. This song was first written in tribute to a family member who died in a coal mine cave-in. It is a song of longing and of tenderness. But I'd like to switch the script a bit. Instead of thinking of this song as a song of sorrow, of grief, and of brokenness, let me suggest a different way to hear the words, especially the repeated words, you are loved. Maybe we can consider this our own song that we sing to the crucified Jesus of Nazareth, conveying to him our longing for that strong presence, for that trusted healing power. Or perhaps we can hear these words as the risen Christ assuring us in the midst of our uncertainty, of calming us in the middle of our fear, and of accompanying us in our dislocation. With these words from the risen Christ, maybe we can fully depend on being loved unreservedly by the God who is love. However you hear the words of the song, let us pray through this video.
about you, but, but I just feel like I am settling, settling and settled into God's warm and loving embrace. That all will be well, as Julian of Norwich once said, that all will be well. Well, this is the end of our fireside chat until we meet again next week. Uh, these fireside chats take place uh, twice a week and they are available uh, on our website at uh, kincardenunitedchurch.org uh, or you can find them on uh, our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and uh, enter into the search engine Kincardine United Church Ontario on the YouTube channel and our, uh, our videos that are saved to there will come up right away and you can take your choice including some of the recorded services from the last month. The blessing I'd like to leave you with is taken from our Voices United hymn book, number 319. It is attributed to St. Patrick in the 13th century. God be in your head and in your understanding. God be in your eyes and in your looking. God be in your mouth and in your speaking. God be in your heart and in your loving. God be at your end and at your departing. Until next time, God bless you all. Amen. <laughs>